The global economy is weak. We've seen the numbers weakening since 2018 and beyond. Some have picked up in 2019, but ultimately most hard data looks very dismal. If the US stock market continues to increase and the unemployment rate inches closer and closer to zero, the Fed will run out of excuses not to increase rates. We're in for an interesting one ahead. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to talk about China primarily, I also want to mention the United States. We've had the trade issues going back and forth. You saw what was supposed to be the completion of a deal. This trade deal didn't happen and in fact we had tariffs increased in this time frame when it was supposed to happen a long time ago. The resolutions were supposed to be here, they are not. We are watching the global economy that has been blaming this issue among other things like Brexit and like the weather that day and other things that may or may not be the actual causes, but this is one that has been lingering for the past year. And I do believe, as I've said in previous videos, that this trade deal is just one part of the bigger picture. So let's get into the issues today. We are seeing the China passenger vehicle sales year over year continuing to decline over the last few years. We have watched these numbers dwindling and I believe this has now been 11 months in a row specifically for this. So we are seeing this at a time in which the trade issues impacting it, but we are also seeing the global economy slowing. We are seeing disposable income dropping. We are seeing the savings rate that has been actually terrible to be begin with, but people are maxed out on every single form of debt. This is in China, this is in the US, we're seeing it all over the world in fact, and of course this is not coming at a good time. One of those other things that's not coming at a good time are the tariffs, because these increased tariffs are hitting at a time of global weakness. This happens to be the United States ISM Manufacturing PMI, and you are looking at this Coming, as I said, while these tariffs are introduced, you're seeing the economy falling further and further. This happens to be the United States, but we can look at this for Europe as well and other places that happen to mirror what you're seeing here. So this number, of course, fluctuates all the time, but it's good to keep an eye on it, and I do reflect on this from time to time. NFIB, Business Conditions Outlook, it mirrors the exact same situation here. Just wanted to show you that this is for the United States and the global equity markets while they have come up over the last few months they have been rocked just in the near term here we are watching trillions of dollars being wiped off of the stock market in such a short period of time after having come up quite a bit we still haven't got to where we were previously and this has shown us the weakness that actually has been going on now this is uh, really something that most people don't understand. They only look at the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow Jones, and they're actually trying not to favor the Dow Jones for more reason than one. But regardless, just take a look at this. Global equity market capitalization peaked out at the beginning of 2018 when we had the whole VIX index issues, okay? So this happened to be a problem that most people seem to have overlooked because you watched as other stocks, you know, whether that's tech stocks or others, that had actually gone up afterwards. So that's really all they cared about. However, when you look at it on a global scale, we have seen the markets coming down for that whole entire year of 2018. That happens to coincide, of course, with the global monetary supply, which we'll talk more about in a moment. And then we saw the reflation that happened after that, of course. And right now we are seeing is the global reflation Inflation actually going to persist for a period of time. That's what we don't know. This is all dependent on what central banks do, and I'm obviously paying close attention to it. I know you are as well. This, the blue line, happens to be the global money supply, and then in US dollars, by the way, and then the green line is the S&P 500, and obviously, while there are variances to some degree, time and time again, we see that this happens to correlate eventually. So while it may fall apart for a bit, it tends to be completely and entirely correlated. It's only showing us basically over the last year, but I would always like to check this out whenever I do 
to get updates on this and I always like to see it over the last several years and you just see that while as I said time uh, you know there are times in which they fall away from each other they tend to be very very accurate the more money they print they uh, the stock market will rise as a result and of course we see this on the opposite as well there's no denying that the central banks have such an impact on what happens in the markets anybody who denies that is simply lying to themselves here we have the MSCI World Index and that compares to the global systemically important banks which is the red line there and you can see that while they had reflated upward it seems like they can't get past this narrow band that has been trading in for several months so we obviously are definitely higher than where it was at end of December 2018 but it has not come up and this is the too big to fail banks we're talking about the biggest of the big banks in the world the Deutsche banks the big boys and they are actually not doing very well when you look at it on a historical level they are still down quite significantly and you've seen some of them that have done definitely done well over the last few months in comparison to where they were but I mean take it for what it was we've seen that many 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 stocks around the world have been suffering and why is it just one issue is it really just because the central bank hasn't created enough easy monetary policies no we have a wider issue that is only being blamed on one thing or another oh it's because of brexit that's why the uk is not doing good you look at canada oh it's because of the trade issues you look at china it's the trade issues we always want to point fingers to something but we're never looking at the underlying fundamentals and that is 2008 we had a huge problem they put a band-aid over it they tried to bandage up the wounds and then it really only was later as we see today causing even more of a problem and what do they do well they throw the stimulation at it ray dalio other big boys out there that have mentioned the fact that the next time around the qe it's not going to work they have to go and do something else many have suggested the bail-ins will be the next solution other people have said you're going to have to print money and put it right in people's pockets that's the only solution there are many things that could happen i'm simply just monitoring the situation makes sense of it all this is the timeline for the trade issues. I wanted to include this, it's from Rabobank, and you can see it for yourself if you want to know as this has all played out. I think it's relevant to the video, so I decided to include it there, but I'm not going to cover anything from it. Now, this is where we get interesting, because what's happening in China today, I mean, you have the ghost cities, you have the biggest public works projects in the history of the world, you have the intervention directly from the central bank, the PBOC, you also have the government itself Itself, creating different stimulus packages you have the requirements for the banks becoming very very relaxed now at this time I mean on every single level we have been watching the amount of stimulation has been unprecedented not just for China but even on a global scale now we have this cash strapped China Min Sheng investment by the way this is like the JP Morgan of China seeks money from its employees so you pay think about this we're gonna pay you a salary but give us a bunch of it back and we're gonna hold it for you well that's what they're doing right now this particular company among the country's largest private investment firms is raising funds from its employees as it seeks to combat a liquidity squeeze that's interesting the company has set up a special funding pool I love that special funding pool for the fundraising all of the employees in the headquarters can put their own money into the pool and choose when buying debt or equity so how does that sound if you worked for your particular company let's just say wherever that is small medium large company and they said look we are just not doing well right now our company is really suffering check this out we're going to give you an option to just take a percentage of your paycheck and we're going to put it back into the company how does that sound you just worked all of this time frame and we're going to give you the opportunity to invest back into the company how does that sound well i'm asking you how would you 
really respond to something like this. Of course, they might offer people a little bit of a treat, but as far as I'm concerned, if the company is not looking good, I don't want to put my money there. Well, this particular debt laden company, once among China's most high profile and acquisitive private companies domestically and globally, had missed payment and formed an emergency committee to deal with its liquidity troubles, raising investors' fears about financing pressures on China's overall private sector. This goes to show you what has really been going on inside of China. It's just a small piece of the puzzle. And now for the big news of the day. This year is shaping up to be the biggest by far for defaults in China's $13 trillion bond market. It's a big market. I mean, if you compare it to, let's say, the United States, maybe you would say, oh, it's just a small thing. But it's not. It's $13 trillion, okay? And we are looking at the biggest defaults ever. Highlighting the widening falloff in the government's campaign to rein in leverage, companies defaulted on $5.8 billion of domestic bonds in the first four months of the year. Okay, Think about that. We are only four months into the year when these stats come out, and already there's nearly $6 billion worth that have been defaulted on. This is big news. I don't see it out there. I mean, this is not being covered by those who are you know, telling you to buy uber stock who are looking at apple and amazon and saying it's fantastic we need to address the real concerns that are happening right now some 3.4 times the total for the same period of 2018 by the way 2018 was terrible the pace is also more than triple that of 2016 when defaults were more concentrated in the first half of the year unlike 2018 the trend is clear unless something changes 2019 will will be the new high. China continues to press banks to extend credit to the private sector. Okay, we've shown you this before where the total social financing had been increasing dramatically. They're saying they're getting rid of the shadow banking. And of course, it's still gargantuan in size, but they're trying to rein it in supposedly. I don't actually think that's going to happen, but here they are. And as a result, we're seeing this default that are increasing dramatically. That means we're going to have the central bank coming in and giving a helping hand. Well, the latest move came on Monday when the central bank loosened some reserve requirement rules for lenders. Yet again, they are going out there and making it easier and easier. This has happened many, many times over the last few years. It's not just one or two times. We're talking about several occasions where they have been relaxing the rules. This isn't good. This is when you know that the economy is weak, but you can point to the stock market. You can point to the performance of this or that, but you don't increase or decrease these type of uh, all, all the different rules and regulations, and you don't decrease the interest rates, and you don't print money when things are good. That is understood. That is not just because of what we're seeing right now or, or, or since the financial crisis. Historically, this is the case. You can't deny it, yet most people do. Record defaults. Missed bond payments quadrupled in 2018. So you're just witnessing what we had seen right here, 2018. And of course, looking at 2019 on pace to beat it by far. So we'll see what happens You know, throughout the year. We might have a big change. There might be a resolution to the trade issues and everybody kisses and makes up and suddenly the world is totally fine. We'll see how it all plays out. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a like on this video, you are supporting me. You're supporting this channel, so I do appreciate that very much. If you want the financial education that you weren't taught in school, these two books have everything, foundation, history, the asset classes, all the details. Check that out at the link in the description. You'll be able to flip through the pages of the books for yourself to see if you like them. And if you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to know about China's $32 trillion secret, you got to watch this video. Click on it and I will see you there.